Okay, uh, does that look correct to you? You seen my slides? Okay, thank you. So um, thank you for inviting me. I'd like to speak about a, a, a system that I call Project Free Spirico, which is uh, an amalgamation of the words, a free respiration ecosystem and how it relates to GOSH as I understand it. Um, public Invention is a US 501c3 public charity. Our motto is to invent in the public for the public. And we're trying, trying to take the free Libre open source software principles and apply them to hardware inventions, very much like what GOSH is doing. Although you guys focus on scientific research and we focus on a little wider range of things. Um, oh, we're a very small um, nonprofit uh, with very small budget. I don't get paid. We mostly don't pay our volunteers. So we're an all volunteer effort, but we do try to pay for hardware expenses for our teams, which is very similar to the way GOSH um, and actually even Jogal is, is organized. So um, <clears throat> when we can, if a team is working on a project, we try to pay all of their expenses in terms of equipment and services uh, that they may need. Um, we have over 60 projects which have been defined. Obviously, they're not staff, they're not being worked on anybody, but we collect um, project ideas for anyone who's willing to, to uh, place them in the public domain by putting them under a Creative Commons license. And we just list these projects in hopes that uh, we can get people to pick them up later. Um, the Free Spirico manifesto uh, is related to a grant that I'm attempting to write, but I'd, I'd like to just read it to you, even though it's boring to hear somebody read in general. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated a clear and present need for a complete, free libre, open source, easily repairable, widely usable, safe and effective respiratory support device medical um, device ecosystem. Now, you might ask, why am I using the word ecosystem? In the first place, it's not actually an ecosystem, but in English, we use that word to describe a cooperating system of pieces now. And in the case of human respiration, there are so many medical devices that are so similar and actually share internal technology that it's useful to think of developing them in an integrated way. So fundamentally, most respiratory devices like oxygen concentrators, ventilators, BPAP machines or bi-level um, positive airway pressure machines or CPAP machines, um, continuous positive air pressure machines, um, PAPRs, which are a positive airway um, mask essentially, and bag valve mask monitors and other things. All they do is move medical gases around. So that's not easy, but in a way it's simple, right? You're just taking a mixture of air and oxygen, sometimes humidified and temperature controlled and moving it into and out of the patient in a very uh, pressure and flow controlled way. So in many ways, these machines are all very similar. So it helps to think of them as a system. Now, that's the kind of thing that open source software is really has pioneered in the last 30 or 40 years. That, that is, open source software programmers would automatically think about how to break systems up in ways where components can be reused and libraries can be reused. This has not been done in the terms of medical devices because in general, for-profit firms have no reason to cooperate with other for-profit firms in trying to do this, okay? However, in uh, the situation in public convention in, we're not a for-profit firm. We hope that for-profit firms will take our technology and decide to build it and make money from it. But we are not ourselves going to be deploying medical devices. The um, objects uh, that are in bold here, that, that have a bold outline, are the things that we have already built in a way. We've built a ventilator called the Polyvent system. We've defined standards for respiration data and respiration control, which I'm actually very proud of um, because it's very unglamorous work to define a standard, but it's absolutely essential for international cooperation on these kinds of things. And then we have a device called the Ventmon, which I'm actually gonna attempt to demo later on in the talk here. I'm gonna power it up now. Um, 
the, this is the Ventmon, a device which we made and gave away to teams that were working on um, ventilation technology. And I'll be, be demoing that um, later. And of course, the purpose of all of this stuff is to eventually help people who are sick. Um, and so the reason that's really the reason we're doing all of this. And open source medical devices are probably an even higher bar in terms of quality than open source science devices, right? Um, so it's not that easy to build an open source microscope, but if you fail, nobody dies. Whereas a ventilator is entirely capable of killing someone if it is not robust and safe in a number of ways. And that's why most such devices require um, regulatory approval. So an example of how you can think of this as a system is uh, the fact that all ventilators can be put on this schema or this diagram. All ventilators, no matter what technology they use, whether they use a fan, a piston, a bellows, a pressure valve, um, a, a blower, um, could be described as an air drive or something which produces medical gases, a sensing module, which provides feedback for that. That's the green module here, a controller, which controls the air drive, and a user interface, which allows clinicians to control that. Now, in terms of um, what public invention has actually done is we've created a software system along with helpful engineering called VentOS, which sort of means ventilation operating system, but it's not really an operating system. It'd be better to think of it as vent open source. Uh, to run on any microcontroller using platform IO, we make it so it can run on any uh, microcontroller and uh, able to drive any ventilation technology. Now, we've also made the sense module, which is the Ventmon, which I'm going to demo for you, and I'm going to explain how it can be used for it. The polyvent system, which we've made, is an air drive, um, and the VentOS system could be considered the controller. We also have some user interfaces. Um, I'm not really going to be showing you that. So how realistic is this? Well, we've already created a number of different components which work together, including the data standards that I mentioned to you. We've, we're also working on an oxygen concentrator, which is not very far along. So all of these pieces are 100% free, open, and modular, and can be reused by anybody without any encumbrance, as long as you respect the uh, reciprocal share-alike licenses which we use for each of these systems. Now. Um, getting to a, a uh, either CE stamp or FDA approved device, which could actually be manufactured and actually save lives is, is a much higher bar. And the fact that we've prototyped a lot of these things and have kind of developed initial uh, working functional prototypes is not quite the same as going so far as to have FDA approval for those things. So I don't want to oversell this, but I believe the idea of making components which work together, which has been established by the open source software community previously, is going to be a very successful um, approach. So how is this particularly relevant to GOSH? Well, um, it, in some ways, it isn't unless you guys are interested in gas flow technology which of course applies to a, a, lot of, a lot of things. So in particular, the Ventmon, it, its original purpose is to be a ventilation tester. As you may recall, at the beginning of the pandemic in March, 2020, there was a belief that, what, by the way, was very well founded based on the science that was known at the time, that even the Western world was gonna need a million more ventilators than they had on hand. Okay, it turned out because of the way to treat COVID-19 that was not needed, but it took the tragedies in Northern Italy before we became aware of that. So that was not a panic. Um, that was actually a well thought out belief. It just turned out to be erroneous. Um, so um, one thing that will be particularly interesting, um, perhaps to Odd, is that the Ventmon is um, internet of things and Wi-Fi enabled. And I, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that later on. Um, if someone is interested in 
using respiration data, I recommend you, you take a look at my PERDS standard, which stands for Public Invention Respiration Data Standard, which is, a, it has two bindings. It has a byte level binding for work inside a microcontroller, and it has a JSON binding, JSON being JavaScript object notation. Um, and it can represent time series of human respiration. And that being able to transmit those to another team and have it rendered with the vent display software is, is perhaps um, very useful for international cooperation. We also have a standard called PERCS, which is the Public Invention Respiration Control Standard, which basically standardizes and modularizes the way a ventilation system is controlled. Now, that doesn't apply to very many uh, scientific instruments because we're talking about human medicine here. But nonetheless, all human respiration is controlled by clinicians in essentially the same way. So what I've done is create an internal standard which would allow, for example, user interfaces in different languages to be applied to the same machine or even different, uh, complete different technologies. Okay, so now I'd like to give a demo of the Ventmon, if I may. Uh, let's see. I need to, I'd like to chat this URL to you. Um, and each of you can go to this URL and you'll see the same thing here. So what you're, what you're looking at here is a completely free system that would be called a data lake in some sense. And you're, you're seeing a live device, which is the Ventmon, which is sitting on my computer. And I just attached it to this test lung. You can see here a little plastic test lung. And as you can see, um, it's providing um, actual live data. Now I'm gonna breathe into the test lung. Um, if you're familiar with human respiration, which I wouldn't expect, you're seeing a pressure curve measured in centimeters of water at the top and flow, which can go backwards. That's why you have negative flow in this um, system. And then down at the bottom here, I can stop this. Um, oops, I thought I could stop it. Yeah. Um, down at the bottom here, we, we have some software which actually breaks this into breaths. And then on the right here, we have um, the typical computations which are used I'm by a. Happen. I'm sorry. Sorry, Matthew. I'm going to have to um, go ahead and mute you, but also hello. Good to see you here. Just because we um, can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can someone give me a thumbs up if if they're seeing the same thing I'm seeing at this URL? I just want to make sure we're good. Okay. Great. Um, so basically, the the things on the right are. Um, what a clinician who was looking at a ventilated patient would want to see. And the thing that may be interesting, you know, Odd mentioned the, the Internet of Things type approach here, is that this could be used for telemedicine, right? I'm not sick at the moment, but here I am in Austin, and you guys are in almost real time. The delay is probably a second for you, seeing what I'm, I'm doing in, in a way that could be used here. Now, this system was not really designed for medicine. It was designed for international teams attempting to build ventilators to um, study the, the impact of their ventilator. So this has not been developed with the level of care um, necessary for uh, um, uh, an FDA approved device, but it, it has been used by a small number of teams, I'd say about five, to um, develop uh, uh, the ventilators, that the emergency ventilators that they're working on, including the polyvent, which is now supported by public invention. Okay, so I'm just about to finish up my talk. Uh -oh. Okay, so um, you guys may already know this, um, but at the, at the risk of, of, of sounding like a know-it-all, I'd like to su suggest some advice which I think public invention has learned, um, which I, th I think applies to GOSH in, in certain ways. Um, focus on defining versioned open standards for data interchange and instrument control. And this is very typical of open source software, but the more we can modularize our hardware 
And in general, in a modern electronic device, I know you guys are developing optical microscopes as well, but in an electronic device, that normally means the hardware, which is the user interface can be separated from the actual sensors. The more you can modularize things, the more opportunity you create for cooperation because each module could be improved upon and tested separately or perhaps by different teams. So I think the, the main trick that we in kind of the, the um, humanitarian engineering or global open source science movement can do is to, is to focus on our strength, which is the ability to create interchange and, and modules and standards for everything. Um, IoT enablement for scientific instruments is now relatively cheap. All things are relative, but it doesn't cost very much, maybe $30 to get a Wi-Fi enabled device like you just saw on the Ventmon, which allows data to be shared in, in an extremely powerful way. If you um, have someone skilled enough that they can do what I did, which is to put a data lake at a server and, you, and make it browser available, which not perhaps completely obvious, but in general can be done. So I'm, I'm just about to close my talk now. Um, I have some questions for Gosh, um, you know, can we build a short run production strategy of tens of units? Now, this is not something that open source software people have to worry about very much. They kind of have to go from alpha to beta to a full release and they have to worry about quality, but they don't have to worry about the actual design for manufacture, uh, it, whereas Gosh does, right? Um, my opinion working with public invention is I don't really want to become a manufacturer of instruments. I wish to develop instruments and have them tested by a small number of people to validate that they're useful. And so what we did with the Ventmon is we got two $20,000 grants and we made 30 Ventmons and gave them away free of charge. Um, the latest version is relatively easy to manufacture um, and we're working on another version. My hypothesis is that organizations like GOSH, Jogal, Helpful Engineering, Public Invention, and Cosmic in Canada can have a strategy of producing a small number of units, like 20, getting those into the hands of practitioners to get testing feedback from them and leave what we might call mass production where you have to worry about things like injection molding and the per unit cost becomes much more important. You're, you're really trying to op optimize the marginal cost of the machine, et cetera, um, uh, to others who are gonna go into that, okay? And then finally, a lot of open source software has advanced as the culture has learned how to do things. Um, certainly, the Git control system uh, has done that, but there are also just cultural learnings about how to, how to organize a team, how to work with a team, when to do versioning, et cetera. We're doing that, I would say, pretty well for the prototyping of hardware devices. But I don't believe as a community, we've yet taken on um, the problem of design for manufacture, which means designing for a much larger number of units to be produced. Um, finally, uh, I'd like to make a personal plea for you to read the Open Medical Technology Manifesto and consider signing it. It's a petition um, at change.org. Uh, when we're done here, I'll put the links for all of this in, in the chat or distribute them to uh, Bree if anybody's interested. And with that, uh, I'll take your questions, although it looks like I'm almost out of time.